What's good, YouTube? It's your guy, Darren. I'm the Bowtie Fragrance Guy. On this channel, I talk about fragrances. I also talk about fashion because I personally feel like not only what you smell like matters, but what you look like matters as well. So if you like fragrance as well as fashion related content, then I think this is a channel that you'll find some value in. So why don't you consider hitting the subscribe button and also make sure that you hit the bell icon as well to ensure you get notified when I upload new content on the channel. So guys, on today's video, we're gonna be delving into the house of Mason Francis Kirkjohn. Mr. Francis Kirkjohn is uh, definitely in my top five perfumers. I love to do a fragrance with you one day, Mr. Kirkjohn. If you happen to see this video, hit your boy up uh, and let's talk business. <laughs> in my humble opinion, Mr. Francis Kirkjohn does really well, especially on fresh, more fresh kind of floral uh, floral infused fragrance compositions. I really love, you know, his overall uh, fragrance portfolio. Not only fragrances he's done with his own brand, but also some of his earlier creations, like of course the ever so popular and iconic Lamel from the house of Jean Paul Gaultier. So again, a big fan of uh, Francis Kirk John and a fan of his, of course, his fragrance collection. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. The top 10 fragrances, in my opinion, from the amazing Francis Kirk John line of fragrances. Now, I will say this in full disclosure, I have not smelled every single one of the fragrances. I've smelled a lot of them. And I will say there are two fragrances that I feel like had great potential to be on a top 10 list for me, but unfortunately, they are discontinued and harder to find. Uh, one being Ciel de Gum, uh, which is a fragrance I think that has a very massive amount of cinnamon uh, in it and I could only imagine how good that one is but unfortunately honestly I haven't had a chance to put my my nose on it so that's one that I think would have probably been on this list as well as absolute poreless swore uh, which was an older fragrance uh, I think one of his first fragrances that he actually did um, which again uh, can't really get your hands on that anymore so with that being said obviously I couldn't you know uh, include those fragrances on the, a list like this but I do feel with my taste in fragrances, they had a great chance to be on this list. Now, now that that's out of the way, if you want to see what I did choose for the top 10 fragrances from the house of Mason Francis Kirkjohn, you know the routine. Keep it locked right here. All right, guys, we're back. Thank you so much for keeping it locked in, man. We're not going to belabor the time. We're going to jump right into this list of fragrances. And the first one up in the 10th spot for me, this is from his new collection, which is the uh, Cologne Forte collection. There's three fragrances in that collection. And I picked this one up because sometimes I just want something that's fresh, ultra clean, and easy to wear. So I snagged this one. This is just called Aqua Universalis Forte. Aqua Universalis Forte. And again, very sweet, uh, very, I'm sorry, easy to wear, clean, fresh, fresh bergamot citrusy opening. On this fragrance, you have a beautiful bergamot. There's some sweet pea in this and white musk. And again, white musk is, gives this very, very clean uh, kind of feel to fragrances. Some people don't like this fragrance, but for me personally, I really, really enjoy it. It's really fresh. Again, it's really, really a clean scent. And sometimes that's what I need, just really fresh, clean, and easy to wear. And for me, this one definitely meets that and fits that criteria. So it's in the 10th spot for me, nothing is gonna blow you away, but when I'm in the mood for something really easy and fresh, then I reach for this one in my collection of MFK fragrances. So check it out, guys. This one is called Aqua Universalis Forte. All right, guys, the next fragrance up on the list coming in at the ninth spot for me. This one is called Aqua Celestia. Aqua Celestia. Now, they do have a Forte version of this fragrance as well. So if you did this one, the Forte, either one, interchangeable here to me. But this one, again, this is very clean as well. But this was more about the greener elements in here as well as Mimosa and Neroli. So this is one of those fragrances I think you have to really be a fan of Neroli to really appreciate this one, which I am. But you get in the Roly, you get the Mimosa, it has a nice, you know, uh, citrus opening. Uh, primarily, I pick up the lime 
in the opening of this one. And again, white musk. So again, clean. As I said, to me, Francis Kirk John does really, really well with uh, florals, uh, with infusing florals in his fragrances and not um, making them where they're too masculine or feminine, honestly. They kind of go right there in the middle and that's something that I think works well for the brand. The fact that a lot of his fragrances, although a lot of these have a female or marketed counterpart, but most of them, whether they're marketed for male or female, can kind of lean both ways. Uh, so again, really nice one. If you like uh, fragrances more with a green undertone, clean and fresh again, this is something that I think you will enjoy. So in the ninth spot for me, this one again is called Aqua Celestia. All right, guys, now coming in at the eighth spot for me, uh, this one is called Aqua Vitae. Aqua Vitae. Now, just like Aqua Celestia, this one does have a Forte uh, version of this fragrance. So again, if you went with that, this one, either one kind of works for me. Uh, but this one opens up really, really with a nice, fresh and uh, citrusy opening. This is really, really nice uh, kind of orange uh, and Mandarin kind of opening on this one right here. But what I like about this one, it starts to infuse some of the sweeter elements combined with the citruses and the florals. You get tonka bean and vanilla on this uh, as it starts to dry down. So it's a little bit sweet, so I like that. But again, in Kirk John fashion, it's not overly sweet. Even though it has two of the, I would probably say the most utilized notes uh, to uh, give that sweet undertone to fragrances, vanilla as well as tonka bean, it still manages to stay fresh and have a nice balance. I think there may be jasmine in the heart of this as well. There's that use of florals, but man, again, nice. Like this will be a theme of this list, fresh and clean for the most part, but I like the inclusion of some of those sweeter elements without it being too sweet. So I really enjoy this one uh, from MFK. Again, check this one out, guys. This is called Aqua Vitae. All right, now coming in at the seventh spot for me, this is one of the newer releases from MFK, and this one is called Lone a la Rose. Lone a la Rose. This is so dope. You can actually see a nice uh, picture of a rose if you look through the back. If you look through the back of the bottle, you can see a picture of a rose. This one to me, man, is kind of different. You guys know I love uh, rose-based fragrances pretty much. And uh, for me, this one gave me something different, a very green rose. So a lot of rose fragrances that I have in my collection right now that I adore, the Portrait of the Ladies of the World, uh, the Oud Satin Moods, the um, New York uh, Oud from Bond Number no. 9. Those are a little bit more of a heavier, uh, darker, um, I would even say more of a jammy kind of rose in those fragrances. They have patchouli and oud and stuff like that. This is a fresh rose fragrance. But what I love about it again, it's not too feminine. Now I talked about a fragrance from uh, Killian, A Kiss from a Rose, and that one to me is the most feminine leaning uh, rose fragrance I have in my collection. This is fresh in a similar manner to A Kiss from a Rose, but this is a lot more masculine, kind of middle of the road. And I love that, man. So if you like rose-based fragrances like me, and but you want something that's a little bit more of a fresher, more green kind of rose variety, I think you will really enjoy this scent. It really, really smells fantastic, man. But check this one out. Uh, again, this is called Loam a la rose all right guys coming in at the sixth spot for me this one is called masculine pluriel masculine pluriel now this is the fougere fragrance from the masses the, from the francis kirk john collection and guys i have uh, that those times where i really have a good good desire for a nice fougere fragrance works really really well when you're dressed up to me fougeres they kind of got that traditional feel to them and of course uh, one of the notes that you're going to find most of the time when you find a fougere is lavender and i love the lavender in this it has the lavender some musk uh, as it starts to dry down some cedar wood so it gets really really woody uh, on the dry down of this one a little bit of patchouli in there as well but this guy's again if you like a nice aromatic fougere scent then this is the one from the amazing francis Kirk john collection that you're going to want to put your nose on. It smells great, honestly. It's in my top five fougeres in my entire collection. Love the way this stuff smells, man. Uh, so check it out again uh, from the house of MFK. With This one is called Masculine Pluriel. All right, guys, the next fragrance on the list, this is probably one of the most overlooked fragrances from 
the MFK line is so good, but it gets so little attention. Uh, this one is called a mirror's own. A mirror's own. Now I've heard some people say this kind of reminds them of designer fragrances. I, I don't know, man, whatever. I, that kind of stuff sometimes goes over my head. But what I will say about this one is you get a nice juicy mandarin opening in this fragrance. And what I love about it is the transition that it goes through because when it starts to dry out, it becomes all about coconut, coffee, this kind of creamy, uh, milky, uh, iris note that's in, this, in the heart of this fragrance. Of course, the amorous flower, which is one of the main notes, hence the name of the fragrance. But again, that coffee, the chocolate, and the coconut as it dries down with tonka bean takes this fragrance in a totally different direction. Maybe that's what some people may have a quarrel with that, with this fragrance. But to me, this is like one of the complimented fragrances, one of the highly complimented fragrances. This is one when people smell it, they get that sweetness of the tonka bean, the coconut, and a little bit of that chocolate as it dries down. And it's just a fragrance that people really are drawn to. So again, I don't really know why it doesn't get the attention that I feel like it deserves, but at the end of the day, it's cool with me. I love it. And that's why it's in the fifth spot for me. This one is called A Mirror's Own. All right, guys, and coming in at the fourth spot for me, now this fragrance has made my uh, summer uh, niche list plenty of times. Love this stuff. This one is called Petite Matin. Petite Matin. And again, this is one, has a nice citrus opening now. I think there's Neroli in this as well, so that's one of those notes. I know that can kind of be make or break for some people, but again, I love this stuff. I think it has some ambroxan in here uh, as it starts to dry down, a little bit of musk as well. But again, just the perfect, nice citrusy floral fragrance to wear in the summertime, and it smells amazing. Again, uh, fragrances that kind of, it may kind of remind you of this scent where this one kind of separates is the quality. You can really smell the quality. And again, for me, when a fragrance is that heavy on the citruses and the floral, sometimes it's hard to really do that uh, in the manner of quality in which this fragrance is able to accomplish that. But man, it's pulled off uh, to perfection and I love it. So in the fourth spot for me, again, this one is called Petite Matin. All right, now coming in at the third spot for me, one of the best amber fragrances on the planet. Of course, you guys know this one well. This is called Grand Soir. Grand Soir. Benzoin, labdanum, and amber and vanilla. This is a very, very buttery, smooth, ambery, creamy kind of fragrance. And again, if you like amber, this is one I, that you have to put your nose on at some point in time because it's really, really, really good. Uh, quintessential kind of fall winter fragrance for me. But again, it's just such a well done fragrance when you talk about amber. The mixture of, you know, again, the vanilla, uh, you get a little bit of resins that come in there from that labdanum, but this stuff is just good, guys. A lot of people talk about this one, so I won't spend too much time on it, but again, it's in my top three because it's that daggone good. So check it out, guys. This one is called Grand Soir. All right, now coming in at the number two spot for me, again, another one I won't have to talk much about, but it is really good, and of course, this is Baccarat Rouge 540. Baccarat Rouge 540, now this is the Straight to Parfum. I have the original as well. I have a little bit left in that bottle. So for now, I'll be rocking this one. And of course, they included the almond uh, in this fragrance. And again, guys, this fragrance has been talked about at nauseam. It's been cloned um, almost as much as Creed Aventus for good reason. It's that good, hands down. There's really no debating it. Is everybody gonna like it? No, but the numbers say that the vast majority of people do men and women alike really love this particular scent and it's no different for me i love it again when i rock it the way that i'm dressed it just takes my whole vibe to the next level and that's what i love about this fragrance so check it out if you guys know what this is and what it does this is called baccarat rouge 540 and this is the extract de Parfum. all right guys and the number one fragrance for me in my amazing francis kirk john collection this one is called Oud Satin Mood. Oud Satin Mood. Now, there are several fragrances from uh, his Oud line of fragrances, and when I put my nose on all of those fragrances, this was easily, for me, my favorite one. It has two different varieties of rose. I think there's Turkish rose, uh, and there's another variety of rose. I can't remember off the top of my head, but 
Man, this thing has like this kind of nutty undertone. I think that comes from the combination of the benzoin and the vanilla. Just gives it this kind of nutty sweetness underneath the, the rose. And I really, really love this stuff. Violet leaves in here as well, give this fragrance a little bit of a freshness. And I think it's so necessary and it was perfect to use that here so that it wouldn't go too heavy and too dark. But man, this stuff is absolutely fantastic. When I want to knock them dead, if I'm dressed to kill, not literally, but you know what I mean. If I'm dressed to kill, formal suit and tie, dressed to the nines, yeah. This is one of my go-tos, man. This stuff is good. It's good. It's good. My number one fragrance from MFK, Ooh Satin Mood. All right, guys, that's it. That is my time. I hope you enjoyed the video today as I gave you my top 10 fragrances from the house of Mason Francis Kirkjohn. As always, I appreciate your time and your attention to this video because, of course, you didn't have to watch. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but you took a few moments to spend it with me, and I sincerely appreciate that. Now, don't forget to make sure you take a few moments to like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you're sharing these videos out, guys, to some other folks that may find this content entertaining or just may love fragrances because I'm your guy, the Bowtie Fragrance Guy. I love to look good, and of course, I love to smell absolutely fantastic. So, until next time, guys, keep looking good. Keep smelling even better. I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.